ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وامامنا ونبينا وقائدنا ورسولنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله بالغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هارك My brothers and my sisters in Islam I begin with the greeting of Islam May the peace and the blessings of Allah and the mercy of Allah be upon you I continue by testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah Acknowledging that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the final messenger and a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. And whomever is allowed to go astray due to their own wrongful actions, sinful desires and inclinations, none can guide back except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith which is authentic, إِنَّ فِي الْجَنَّةِ غُرَفَ يُرَى ظَهِرُهَا مِنْ بَاطِنِهَا وَبَاطِنُهَا مِنْ ظَاهِرِهَا أعدها الله لمن أطعم الطعام وأبشى السلام وصلى بالليل والناس نيام. It's a very powerful hadith and the hadith is authentic in um, al mustadrak And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi says, indeed in paradise there are rooms that are see-through. The inside can be seen from the outside and the outside can be seen from the inside. And they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what are these rooms for? These luxurious, beautiful rooms in Jannah. What are they for? He said, they're for the ones who used to feed people. And they're for the ones that used to spread peace among people. And for the ones that used to pray at night when the rest of the people were asleep. My brothers and my sisters, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked, when a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, by Amr ibn Abbasah, this is early Mecca, Imagine Amr, a companion who's thinking about accepting Islam at this time. So he says to him, Ya Rasulullah, mal Islam? What is Islam? What is Islam in a nutshell? So what is the Prophet Sallallahu going to say? Describing Islam in the Meccan era, in a simple way. He responds, As-salam tayyibul kalam wa it'am al-ta'am. The Islam is the manifestation to manifest the best of speech and to feed people who are hungry. And the first address, the first public address in Medina, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu took to the minbar to speak to the Muslim community for the first time, imagine the first address in Medina, he says to them, Ya ayyuhal nas, O you who, O, o humans, not even all believers actually, O humans, Afshu salam wa ta'imu ta'am, wa silu al-arham, وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامِ O humans, spread peace, say salam, spread peace amongst each other. Feed others, connect with your kinship, with your family, be there for those that need you. And pray at night when the world is asleep, you will find Allah shall give you Jannah with peace. You will enter Jannah with peace. And my brothers and my sisters, in the days that we're living in now. COVID has affected many, many families. It has affected us socially. Is it affected us emotionally, economically? Many families are struggling. And today we're given the opportunity to give back in a beautiful way. The food bank is collecting today, looking for your support, looking for the opportunity from the community to stand behind and to give it that encouragement. Each and every one of us today is given the opportunity to support an entity which has served close to more than 7,000 families in the last 13 years. And it's growing year by year, serving more and more people. So I'm asking you to be generous and to be kind in giving back, especially now when many families depend on coming to the food bank as one of their primary sources of sustenance for the whole month. And if you're sitting around thinking, you know, subhanAllah, we're living in a time 
where there are so many resources and so many different food banks? How could there be people in the community that are actually struggling with hunger? You'd be surprised. You're in a privileged position if you're asking that question. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you in that privileged position. But wallahi, there are many, many families that are struggling and many, many families, including newcomer families, refugees, single mothers, single parents, and people who don't speak the language, lack the cultural capital, lack the linguistic, linguistic capacity to express themselves and the resources to be able to sustain themselves, and they are desperately in need. And we're given here the opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, to help. If you're able to help financially, may Allah accept from you. If you're able to help through your kind words and your generous smiles, encouraging the people, the brothers and sisters who are part of this program, may Allah accept from you. And if you're able to donate your time and your energy and your advice and your presence and your support in body language, in context, in backing up the brothers and sisters in any way possible, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you. There are many, many doors and gateways to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the key, as we're taught, لَا تُحَقِّرَنَّ مِنَ الْمَعْرُوفِ شَيْئًا Do not underestimate the reward or the blessing of the smallest act of good. And my brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا إنا نخاف من ربنا يوما عبوسا قمطريرا فوقاهم الله شر ذلك اليوم ولقاهم نظرة وسرورا وجزاهم بما صبروا جنة وحريرا متكئين فيها على الأرائك لا يرون فيها شمسا ولا زمهريرا الله describes those in the Quran that are going to be attaining a very privileged position with Allah. He says, And they feed others. With love. You don't just do, okay, here, I take it, go away. With love. Miskeen and wayateem and wasira. They do this to the one who's miskeen. Someone who's stuck. You can imagine someone who's stuck in their social, in their economic position. Not able to help themselves. وَيَتِيمَ and the orphan وَأَسِيرَ and the captive and what do they say when they give and when they support do they say hey don't forget uh, vote for me uh, don't forget no they don't ask for anything they say نَمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ we're only doing this for the sake of Allah for the hope of one day facing Allah with humility لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا we don't want any thank yous or gratitude we appreciate it if it comes but we're not looking for it we fear a day that we're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which the situation will be tough what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them from the evils and the difficulties of that day and allows them to enjoy peace and tranquility and happiness coming to Allah with open hearts, with ease and tranquility. And He rewards them because of their patience. Why is Allah reminding us here, talking about patience? Because giving requires patience. Giving requires patience. You give the first time, you give the second, third, fourth, fifth, you give 10 times, it'll take much, much longer before you see the fruits of your work. You know, shaitan will come like, you gave, khalas, move on. No, don't get into that position, my brother, my sister, where you start withholding from giving and you become angry and frustrated with people who are asking or people who are in need because you've already done so much. No, we will never be able to do enough. And there's nothing that we can do, subhanAllah, and there's not, not much we can do to serve everyone. There's so much demand, it's difficult. So sometimes you become, you, you, get, you get very impatient and frustrated. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا Because they were patient in giving and giving and giving and not giving up. On giving. جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا Allah gives them the, the gift of paradise and the gift of privilege, the gift of comfort, the gift of silk, the gift of luxury. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among them, Ya Rabbi Ameen. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Haqqa, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولْ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَأُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ The one who will receive the book with their left hand will say, I wish I didn't get my book. وَلَمْ أَدْرِ مَا حِسَابِيَ And I wish I didn't know of any of this. I don't want to see it. But you can't be in denial. يَا لَيْتَهَا كَانَتِ الْقَاضِيَ I wish death was the end of me. مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَ What good is my wealth for me now? What good has it done for me? هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَ My power, my privilege, gone. Gone. You know the social capital that I had with people and the respect that people gave me because you know of a specific position that I held or a specific esteem that I was privileged with, all gone. هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوهُ ثُمَّ الْجَحِيمَ صَلُّوهُ Take this person and bind them and allow them to constantly experience the torment. Why? Why did they get punished? إِنَّهُ كَانَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ وَلَا يَحُطُّ عَلَى الْطَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ This person did not believe in Allah, the Magnificent, and did not encourage the feeding of the poor. The people that are in Saqar, one of the worst positions in Jahannam, are asked, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ what has brought you in Saqqar? What has brought you to this terrible position? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that when they're asked about this, how did they get to Saqqar? What did they say? We did not pray. We took prayer for granted. And we did not encourage, we did not feed the poor. And we used to go and wander with the wanderers, talking about this and joking about this and laughing about that and enjoying this and enjoying that, distracted by the apparent luxuries of the dunya. Living in denial. You don't want to confront the, the realities of life, the difficulties of life. So you keep yourself distracted with luxury and happiness and dates and dinners and all these distractions. Until reality and certainty hit us, met us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fajr, the context of this ayat, people are asking, Why? what is the problem? There's so much problem, there are so many problems and evils in the world. So people, subhanAllah, sometimes they, 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 they attribute the failures that are going on in life. So many things are wrong. We attribute it to Allah. Allah has disappointed me. Allah has abandoned me. And Allah says, no, no, no. Don't blame it on Allah. Don't blame, don't blame the evils in your life on Allah. Kalla, no, what happens? Bella tukrimun al yatim. The problems arise because you do not honor the orphan. Wala tahaduna ala ta'am al miskeen. And you don't encourage the feeding of the miskeen, the person who's stuck. Wata kulun al turata akla lamma. And you eat the inheritances, you consume the inheritances, the things that were left for you. All the capital that you have, where does it come from? All the resources that you have, where do they come from? They're things that you've inherited. Either biologically or either because you happen to show up at a place and a space and time. We take much for granted. So you eat and consume. And you love wealth. You have a strong affinity towards wealth. And we know the ending of the surah. My brothers and my sisters, remember that and Nabi says, لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا You will not enter or you will not yeah, you will not enter Jannah until you truly believe and you will not truly believe until you love one another truly love one another You can't be looking at a struggle of someone else and it doesn't trigger something inside you If it doesn't trigger something inside you know that life has distracted you Life has taken your heart and has desensitized you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Surah Al-Shu'ara, 
يوم لا ينفع مال ولا تخزني يوم يبعثون يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم Oh Allah, do not allow me to be from those who are disappointed on the day that everyone is brought back together. On the day that no wealth or children can be of help except for the one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Your wealth can help you and your children can help you if in the process of attaining them and sustaining them, you don't lose your heart. Because then your wealth becomes a resource for khair, not something that binds you and limits you and distracts you. And your children can be a legacy to continue your khair and your good, not something that you've abandoned and consumed and were consumed by in the process of trying to sustain and provide. Don't lose track of the big picture. And don't lose your sense of heart and always rekindle that love that you have for people. Allah, we ask you by your beautiful names and attributes to allow us to be from those who love the people who are struggling and to be from those who give back to the people who are struggling and to be from those who serve selflessly and generously with love and devotion. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على المصطفى اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا في من عطيت اللهم احفظ بلاد المسلمين عن اليمان والشمائل يا رب العالمين اللهم استر عيوبنا وآمنا في أوطاننا واحفظ بلادنا يا رب العالمين اللهم احق دماء المسلمين واشرح صدور المسلمين واحفظ صفوف المسلمين واستر عيوب المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وبعد بين خطايانا واجعلنا من الصالحين المؤمنين المتقين المحسنين يا رب العالمين اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ولا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل آخر كلامنا في الدنيا لا إله إلا الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله واجعل آخر دعاءنا أن الحمد لله وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا